Hello guys and welcome to the channel. Today, quick video on which luxury Swiss watch to buy first or some ideas. If you're looking to buy a luxury Swiss brand watch, here are three options for you. Uh, let me open the watch roll. Um, it's by Vilcase. You can buy it on Amazon. And here you find like the three core pieces of my collection at least is what I consider them to be. The discontinued uh, Rolex Air King, the also discontinued Omega Speedmaster Professional. I mean, this version is discontinued, of course, not the Speedmaster in general, as well as not the Air King, both had successors. And the also discontinued, but also with the successor out there, Breitling Avenger GMT2. And um, yeah, first of all, the question is, why do we buy luxury watches or Swiss watches? And this is probably an answer or a question we simply have to skip. It's like asking a mountaineer why they climb mountains. Uh, the famous mountaineer Reinhard Messner gave the answer why he climbs mountains. And his answer is because they are there. So we buy luxury watches because they are there, they're out there, we want them full stop. So what is what are aspects to look for? One important aspect definitely is quality. It's probably a reason why you want to have a Swiss luxury timepiece because you want a quality piece, a piece of craftsmanship. And um, in my opinion, you can't really go wrong with buying any of these. All of these are quality products they of course are priced way over the intrinsic value, but this is the whole thing about luxury products. There are products you don't really need and that are oftentimes, or in general, more, way more expensive than the actual production costs. So when it comes to quality, maybe we can say all of these brands have certain, uh, let's say, aspects that they're very very good at for example if you're looking for a nice bracelet i think rolex is the brand to go metal bracelet i think they made make the probably the best uh, metal bracelets in the business um if you look at the air king here you can see even though it's a pretty standard bracelet it has this easy link uh, capability other models like the submariner have this uh, quick fit where you can move or slide the bracelet uh, also in the class which makes it gives you even more freedom to adjust but overall the bracelet quality you see the way it slopes here is just magnificent it's a very very nice piece especially if you're looking for a nice bracelet if you're looking for, let's say, the perfect AR coding on a watch, then probably Breitling is the way to go. Their AR coding is just magnificent. Let me clean it just a little. And you can sometimes, you really have the illusion that there's no crystal and this blue hue is just very nice. So they're very good at it. And also, let's say, making overall quality pieces without any big flaws or something. It's just a nice piece and very solid, let's say. That's probably the way to put it. And um, yeah, if you're looking for, let's say, very interesting movements, probably Omega is the way to go. Not particularly the Speedmaster, it's a very standard chronograph movement, but uh, think about um, the movements in the Seamaster with its high anti-magnetic capabilities, um, the movement in the world timer. I know Rolex has very complicated movements like in the Sky Dweller, but um, they have like see-through case bags on many Omega watches. You can see them, you can see the finishing and everything is too high standard. Probably they are on par Omega and Rolex, but I think movement-wise you find very interesting pieces in uh, w or with the Omega brand. When it comes to price or value then um, let's say when it comes to best bang per buck probably 
Breitling would be the number one. It, I mean, of course, it depends on your budget, but uh, with Breitling, you usually get large discounts even on new models and not talking about used ones. And um, uh, there I would say the best bank product probably is Breitling, also with the perceived value out there. Many people know the brand and connect it with quality. Then Omega, still very good price or value, even though the price is also going up. And then Rolex, very expensive, um, especially on the secondary market. When it comes to servicing costs, I also see Breitling is probably the best bank per buck. In, after, according to my research, it is um, the least expensive servicing costs, then Omega and then Rolex. When it comes to the, let's say, brand reputation, and uh, I can't deny that it is an, a part of it. I love these watches, don't get me wrong, but I also spent a lot of money on them or for them because I, you know, the feeling when you buy it like this, mm, John Mayer described it on her dinky, it's like <laughs> you got a kick. Uh, and um, yeah, you, you also want to show probably success, which is, I think, totally okay. Uh, um, and uh, when it comes to the perceived brand reputation, Rolex, I think, is the king. Um, I would say you buy a Rolex 50% because it is a Rolex because the brand has made uh, great advertisements, great marketing efforts, and there's something to appreciate. A man who came from Germany, moved to Switzerland, to Great Britain, and founded a company out of nothing and made it one of the most famous brands among Coca-Cola, Daimler, and everything. It's, it's just amazing. Then you have Omega, of course, with the history always connected, being the watch, the first watch worn by man on the moon very very nice and then you have Breitling and Breitling is also let's say a, a, a brand that is quite popular among the common folks so not like watch geeks like us uh, they will all I think almost anyone out there will also know Breitling and it is a watch that is actually usually you really recognize them because of those rider um, taps on the uh, on the bezel they're pretty let's say in your face so <laughs> if, if this is something that is important to you, then probably the Breitling is a piece to go. Um, at the end, I will give you a wrist shot. Today I'm wearing the um, Nomos uh, Club Campus on the um, aftermarket Meyerhofer um, uh, bracelet, Milanese uh, style bracelet. So let me put on the, um, the Air King. I have a seven inch wrist or close to seven inch wrist, a little bit smaller. You can see it wears very nice. Then we have the, um, the Speedmaster. So here you see it on the gray, on a gray NATO strap. Very, very cool looking. And it's also a strap monster. You can wear it on leather on the bracelet. And last but not least, the Breitling on an um, also aftermarket uh, cheapest NATO straps, leather um, strap with quick release, S some suede leather style in gray, very comfortable on the wrist and also quite versatile watch. You can dress it up, dress it down. So there you have it. My ideas on luxury or first Swiss luxury watches to buy. Um, I think there's one for everyone. And it's of course the higher price segment, but if you're going like under 3000 euros, for example, you also find nice quality pieces, especially on the secondary market, thinking about Tudor, thinking about Longines, thinking about Oris and other brands. But this is like the holy trinity for the not so rich men. The other holy trinity would be Vacheron, um, Patek Philippe and Audemars Piguet, but under those brands probably, according to the reputation, probably Rolex, Omega and Breitling. So this is my opinion. Hope it helped you a little bit. Leave some comments below in the comment section. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe and see you in the next one.